I'm Craig Camp. I'm general manager here at Troon Vineyard on the Kubli Bench in Oregon's Applegate Valley. Troon is an historic site. Uh, this was planted by Dick Troon in 1972, and there were not a lot of acres of vines in those days. So when these were planted, they were farmed, and they were farmed for decades, really, up until 2016, in conventional agriculture. Just like you would expect, the, the, all the sprays, all the applications, all the fertilizers, we're trying to heal this land from that type of agriculture. The amount of damage it does in the long term is incredible. Fortunately, the earth is a very resilient thing. I knew from experience that this was the only route to rebuilding these soils. The fact that he planted here is why we're standing here today. Who knows if this would ever become a vineyard. And that's really lucky for us because this is it's a very special place. Troon is on a geological formation called the Kubli Bench, which was an ancient, uh, uh, along the ancient course of the Applegate River. In a small geological formation like this, it creates its own terroir, its own environment, because the slightly different altitude changes the weather pattern. The, uh, the soil types are different. Everything about it is totally unique within that space. So what we're trying to do, and again, everything kind of comes back to biodynamics to me at the end, is, is we want to, the whole goal is to express that place, the Kubli Bench. So we're trying to put transparency into the wines. Everything is about the fruit. You can't, when you're making biodynamic wine, you can't really do much to it. It's, it's, it's all depending on the quality of fruit you get. So that's, that's our goal, and that's why we study the soils. That's why we study the environment and put such effort into selection. Then if we have the right fruit in the right place, our job as, as winemakers becomes more of, of shepherding the wine, not making it. As we've been going through this transition, the, uh, the vines are getting healthier, the grapes are more fully expressing um, themselves out in the vineyard, and as we bring those um, back into the winery, we are finding ourselves um, being able to take you know, further steps back, um, moving, moving to really appreciate the fruit for what it's showing us, and then being more comfortable then with allowing that to naturally play out in the winery without having to do uh, any manipulations or, or um, alterations to that fruit. Introducing biodynamics was an essential ingredient as we uh, went through this transformation to take the whole property and to farm it as one. An essential aspect of biodynamics is the concept of whole farm where you, you look at your entire property as one almost living organism. So what we're trying to do by selecting places to put different crops and animals is to create a flow through the property and really encourage the property to do what it's naturally able to do, not try to force it into something. Part of our whole whole farm project and the, you know, the biodynamic philosophy uh, this area is going to be a garden, so it's two acres of vegetables that will start up next year. You'll find us in the uh, farm stand, but again, this is a soil selection issue. So if you look over here, you run down and the slope comes down here, and in this, this lower, more clay uh, area, we'll have uh, annual vegetables and again, uh, some pollinator habitat. And then as it flows back up on the other side, you see a block will be Marsan and Lusan. This is more granite soils. You come down into the clay and then you go up on that rise and it becomes pure rouge gravel. Really ideal for those varieties. All of this is slow. Yeah, it's not something you can just, it's not, it's like chemical agriculture. They're trying to like flick a switch, you know, that, that magic pill that's going to do everything. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to, to bring back the health of the soil which is a long-term process. It's really important to understand with the vine, the vine cannot get nutrition without interacting with uh, the fungal population. I always remember in Napa, you would go, it would look, there wouldn't be a weed in the vineyard. You know, it's just totally, totally just concentrated hard dirt. Where you come here and the vineyards look a little messier because there's things growing in them, but also there's things growing in the soil. When I came here in uh, 2016, I would describe this, it looked like a parking lot. It was like blacktop with little holes that where the plants came out of. Just total impaction. And now through years of work, through mechanical and na other natural means, and especially the application, I believe, of biodynamics, 
we've been able to really bring the soil back. So now if you come down here, you come up and, and it's loose, arable, something you can really, and you couldn't do this before. I mean, even if you dug it up, it was hard and just totally uh, uh, unworkable. So this is, to me, the first examples I've been seeing of really the, the incredible impact that, that the biodynamic applications have had. The vines we're planting now, we want them to be alive in 50, 60 years too. I mean, that's our goal is to, to pass, pass them along. You know, I say, you know, we're, we're planting vines now. I'm, I'm putting in vines that uh, the people will make wine from that I'll never taste and who I'll never meet. But uh, that's agriculture, that long-term goal. So this is the beginning of a new project. This is a Grenache block. We did a series of uh, uh, soil tests. We had vineyard soil technologies come up and they dug 73 soil pits here, five feet deep. We had several PhDs up here for a week and they analyzed every aspect of the soil. And we used that information to select what to plant where. And we approached it from not wanting to plant necessarily a specific variety, but by looking at our climate and our soils and then deciding the varieties to plant. So this has all been uh, prepared. First of all, we put down uh, five tons of compost per acre on all the new plantings. And uh, of course, the biodynamic preparations. 500 has been applied several times now. These are going to be head trained vines, which is a very old method of agriculture, bush train, head train. And it offers several advantages. It gives better sun protection. So we want to protect the grapes from the, the most intense sun of the day. And then it also is uh, less demanding for water. So we're combining two things. It's less irrigation and more sun protection. And this has been proven as an ideal uh, way to plant for this area. So this is finished compost. This has been curing now for the better part of a year. We're very fortunate as our next door neighbor is Noble Dairy has been farming organically since 2004. It's very exciting for us because it's literally right next door. So it's, it's the, the, everything about it is part of this part of the valley. So, and I think that's really important in biodynamics. We want to build, you know, the type of, of bacteria and fungi that are native to this area. And that's going to give us the better soil health. The important part about compost is it's not fertilizer. People think about it as fertilizer. What you're actually doing is trying to rebuild the microbiome of your soils. We're also putting everything from our winemaking process in here too. So all the grape skins, the seeds, the stems, everything comes back in and is composted and put back into the vineyard, which we really believe will help us build a better native yeast population. With the change to, to biodynamic and organic viticulture, we are given this opportunity to really make wines with a deep rooted sense of place. And so by by growing these grapes with intention out in the vineyard um, to really then have the opportunity as a winemaker to, to create wines that are really expressing a, a unique sense of place that is the Applegate Valley. We can do things here that no other wine growing region can do and it excites me to be able to be a part of this. For me, the most rewarding part of this entire process has been the life it's generating. You feel life, you see it in the plants, uh, you, you even feel it in the people that are involved in the process. So for me, the most important part has been that, that bringing a property back to life, both the people and the plants and the soils. It's a complete process and I can't think of anything more rewarding.